In the previous session, we have discussed about the different designs of the cooling tower, which include this uh, natural draft tower and forced draft tower. And in this forced draft tower, we have our forced draft and induced draft tower. And in the induced draft tower, uh, we have discussed about this counter flow and cross flow modes. So, in this session, uh, in the initial half, we are going to discuss about how to design a cooling tower. That means, specifically, how to determine the height of the packing, right. So, you see that uh, in cooling tower, again, if I draw the tower, the schematic, say this is the packing height and we count it from z equal to 0 to z equal to h or h t, right. And this uh, section we mark as 1 whereas this as 2. So, we deliver here from here either by suction, sucking in or by forcing in whatever it is. So, let us say the dry air flow rate per unit area of the cooling tower is G s. So, this is dry air flow rate per unit cross sectional area we have the humidity as H 1 that is absolute humidity we have humid enthalpy H y 1 H suffix y 1 that is humid enthalpy and gas temperature that is T g 1. So, the respective quantities when the air is leaving, it will G s will remain unchanged, humidity will increase, humid heat will also increase and temperature will also increase. Now, <coughs> in the same section 2, we deliver liquid water warm water at a rate L 2, its temperature is T L 2 and it flows out at a rate L 1 and temperature T L 1. So, obviously, T L 1 is lower than T L 2 and here you can say that H 2 is greater than H 1, H Y 2 is greater than H Y 1 and T g 2 is greater than T g 1, right. Now, at any section, a differential slice if I consider between z and z plus d z, you see that we have gas temperature here if it is T g it will increase to T g plus D T g and if the humidity is H, here it will be H plus D H. If the humid enthalpy is H y, it will be H y plus D H y, right. Whereas, on the other hand, for the liquid, the temperature will decrease. So, here if it is <coughs> T L plus D T L, it will decrease to T L and we are not writing anything about this L 2 and L 1. Why? Because generally L 2 is close to L 1. Why? Because definitely there will be some drift loss, some evaporation loss of water, but as the feed water the amount is huge, right. 
So that is why we can safely consider L2 to be equal to L1 and that is not going to alter our design calculation. So this is as the loss of liquid due to evaporation is negligible evaporation and evaporation majorly and drift right because there may be entrainment of the water droplets drift is negligible relative to feed water flow rate and note that L2 is basically the flow rate of liquid water again per unit normalized with respect to per unit cross sectional area. So, it is the flow rate of water per unit area or rather cross sectional area of the tower right. So, you see that over any section like here at Z if I think about the interface the schematic of air water interface right what we will see we will see that if this is the interface this is water this side we have water this side we have air then there is a continuous temperature profile. So, here it is T L which we have not marked here, this is the interfacial temperature, this is the gas temperature and naturally this will be the direction of sensible heat transfer. Right. <coughs> now, regarding the latent heat, you must understand that at the surface the water will be saturated or this air will be saturated with water. So, it is uh, humidity will be saturation humidity that is uh, saturation humidity at temperature T i because we know the saturation humidity is a function of temperature from the psychometric chart. So, from H i it goes to H right. And there is no concentration equivalent term on this water side because it is pure water. We will consider it to be pure water. So, <coughs> you see that when I am trying to derive the operating line, unlike other mass exchangers like distillation column, absorption column, right, specifically these two, or extraction, maybe liquid liquid extraction, which we are going to discuss maybe in the next session. So, <coughs> there we write the operating line equation based on the same quantity on the two phases like in the liquid phase it is the mole fraction or mass fraction in the vapor phase it is also the mole fraction or mass fraction of the same component and in mostly it is the solute right. In absorption or in stripping and in extraction also in distillation we will see that it is the more volatile component the mole fraction of that we write in the water or in the liquid and in the gas phase. However, here in cooling tower we do not have such quantity here right we do not have any such quantity like concentration in this water because it is pure water. So, here we have to think of a kind of different types of operating line and what will be that? We may think that okay, we can think of or pick up the quantity H as the variable or operating line variable in 
in gas phase this is fine this concentration equivalent term. However, we consider T L right. So, this we will choose as operating line variable in liquid phase. <coughs> Okay, because there is as such no mass transfer in water phase. So, what will be my operating line equation and that we can obtain simply upon writing an energy balance over this differential slice. Okay. So, energy balance over the differential slice or differential control volume yields what it yields L into CPL into DTL right that is a decrease of temperature of water and that must be sorry not energy balance uh, L into CPL into DTL. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, so we will write it as G S into D H Y. Okay, we will write it as G S into D H Y. Hmm. So, you see that on the left hand side the quantity represents the enthalpy change of liquid and on the right hand side it is the enthalpy change of gas. Now, if I integrate it integrating from 1 that is z equal to 0 to z we have L C P L where L is nearly constant we can see that this is equal to L. So, L C P L into T L minus T L 1 is equal to G S H Y minus H Y 1. So, that becomes the equation of our operating line, right. Line in H Y versus T L space. So, our y axis will be h y and x axis will be temperature. So, one of the point or we can will mark the operating line in this h y versus T L coordinate space. So, next you see that if I focus on this quantity G s into D h y right. So, G s now G s into d h y and if I break it actually our intention here is to break this overall enthalpy increase to the part contributed by latent heat transport and the part contributed by sensible heat transport. So, this will be the direction of latent heat transfer. So, how we can do it? We will simply use the definition of H y. So, this is C s into this T g minus T naught plus lambda naught into H. That is by definition is the measure of humid heat. So, if we take the differential with G s C s into D T g plus G s into lambda naught into d h. So, this is contributed by sensible heat transfer and this is contributed by latent heat transfer. So, now you see that we will try to relate this change of temperature because of this 
change of temperature of this gas because of sensible heat transfer from the perspective of sensible heat transfer rate per unit area of this cooling tower right. So, you see that we can write the sensible heat transfer as Hg into A dz, A is the specific packing area and that is equal to sorry multiplied by the temperature difference which is Ti minus Tg right. So, we can write this quantity as Hg into A dz, this is a specific area of the packing you can understand it, it will be in meter square per meter cube. Why we have to go for it? Because we have chosen unit cross sectional area of the bed and for the unit cross sectional area the available mass transfer area will be A into dz over this slice. So, <coughs> Ti minus Tg plus now the latent heat transfer definitely it is associated to the mass transfer rate and multiplied by latent heat. So, it will be Ki prime A into dz Hi minus H into lambda naught right. So, write it as Ky prime into A dz Hi minus H into lambda naught. Now, if I take this Ky prime into A into dz common, what will be the leftover? Here we will have Hg divided by Ky prime into Ti minus Tg plus lambda naught into H i minus H right. So, let me erase this part. So, you see from here <coughs> we can write that G s into D h y, G s into D h y is equal to K y prime into A into D z multiplied by. Now, for air water system from Lewis relation we know that H g divided by K y prime is equal to C s. So, this is C s within bracket T i minus T g plus lambda naught into H i minus H. So, this is from Lewis relation. for air water system. that is a g divided by k y prime equal to c s. So, from there we will get that g s into d h y further if I simplify see what can happen k y prime into a into d z multiplied by c s t i minus t naught plus lambda naught h i minus C s T g minus T naught plus lambda naught h and by definition this is K y prime a d z and by definition this term here is H y i and this term is H y. So, we have H y i minus H y 
where HYI represents the humid enthalpy at the interface and HY is the humid enthalpy in the bulb. So, you see that next we can integrate this and get the liquid height or oh sorry tower height like G s divided by K y prime a which is constant. So, d h y by h y i minus h y integral h y 1 to h y 2 equal to h t because integral z equal to h t gives you this. So, again by the understanding of absorption where we have introduced the idea of the height of transfer unit and the number of transfer unit. You can write that this is H T G based on gas phase multiplied by N T G is equal to H T. So, this is height of transfer unit based on gas phase and this is the height of transfer unit based on liquid phase. So, overall it gives you the total height. Now, immediately the question arises that if I have to use this equation how to get the value of H y i that is the enthalpy at the interface. Okay. So, our next objective will be to solve for this interface enthalpy or humid enthalpy at the interface. So, the question is how to solve for the humid enthalpy at the interface. So, here again we will use this equation right and we will convert it to the rate form. So, what is the equation L C P L D T L is equal to G S into D H Y. Now, again if I draw you see the profile let us say this is T L, this is T i and this is T g and here we have H i and H. <coughs> so, L C P L D T L the sensible heat transfer the only mode of transfer in the liquid phase we can write as H L into A into D z into T L minus T i and that from our understanding it is equal to K y or from our derivation K y into A into D z into H y i minus H y. So, H y i minus H y divided by T i minus T l equal to minus of H l A by K y prime A. So, this is the equation with which we can solve for H y because T L and H Y see this is the coordinates of a point on operating line right and this represents the same on equilibrium line that is H y i versus T i plot which is H y saturation versus T plot right. So, from the operating line if I draw a line with a slope of minus of H L A by K Y prime A, it will intersect this equilibrium line or the saturation curve 
at this H Y I and T I. So, from there we can get this uh, H Y I value which will substitute here for different points and go for numerical integration. So, we have got three equations of importance. So, let us now discuss the final procedure stepwise procedure how to calculate the height of the cooling tower. Right. So, let us first list the useful equations. What are the equations? Number 1 operating line that is L C P L T L minus T L 1 is equal to G S H Y minus H Y 1. Right. Second, the equation of tower height that is H T equal to G S divided by K Y prime A integral H Y 1 to H Y 2 D H Y by H Y I minus H Y. And third, the equation to determine interfacial properties which are H Y I minus H Y divided by T L I or T I T L I and T G I are same T L I minus T L minus H L A by K Y prime A. So, there are three equations and with these three equations we are going to determine this H T. So, how to do that? So, steps to determine H T. Now, what will be given to you? Inlet temperature of liquid water, target outlet temperature of liquid water and liquid water flow rate. Right, and you know this TG1 and TG1, H1, and uh, huh, TG1 and H1, right. So, first, however, GS is not given, right. So, first step is determination of minimum gas flow rate right G S minimum. So, you have to draw this this temperature this is H y and we have this H y i versus T i plot. So, this is right. <coughs> now, first you look at see you know operating line points like T L at 1 you know and definitely as H 1 is known. So, you definitely know H Y 1 right considering a datum temperature T naught. So, you can locate this point the terminal point on this operating line 
as TG1 or rather not TG1, TL1 and HY1. And you can also locate this TL2. Right. So, first you draw a tangent or you connect if, if it is directly connectable without intersecting this line you directly connect it otherwise you draw a tangent. The tangent means tangent to this equilibrium curve means operating line and equilibrium line they are touching each other which means it is an infinite tower height and that corresponds to minimum gas flow rate. Okay? So, we will draw this line like this. So, this is the limiting operating line that corresponds to G s minimum. Right? So, the slope the slope of this line, what was the slope here? So, H L C P L by G S. So, L C P L by G S minimum. So, you know L, you know C P L. So, determine G S minimum. So, how to determine it? So, draw the limiting operating line and from the slope of it determine G s minimum, right? So, next will be definitely we have to increase this gas flow rate, uh, there is a definite fraction. So, exactly you can see that this, this totally based on the thumb rules and uh, one point two five to one point five times of this minimum, right. So, determine G s operating or G s rather as 1.25 to 1.5 of G s minimum. So, done, right. Draw the actual operating line knowing G s. So, now you know G s as you have got G s minimum you have multiplied it by this factor and you have this actual operating line. So, here. So, this is the actual operating line, right. So, we have the value of H y 2 known to us this will be the h y 2. So, next you see, so we have used this equation and next we have to use it in order to determine the height, but for that we need to perform this integration which necessitates the knowledge of h y i database for individual h y. So, what we will do as we are integrating it with respect to h y. So, we will discretize this domain from h y 1 to h y 2 by equispaced lines like this, 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 this and this. Okay. So, more or less they are equispaced. Now, from this operating line, 
right individual points on this operating line starting from hy2 hy1 and terminating at hy2 will draw lines with slope minus of hla by kya so these are the lines see so they are parallel lines right so if this represents this uh, tl and hy if this points coordinate the respective coordinate on the equilibrium line that will be ti hyi and the slope is minus of hla by k y prime a. So, next step is determination of h y i data set for each or for h y right. So, what do you have to do? The discretize H Y domain domain that is the domain space spans from H Y 1 to H Y 2 into equispaced data points. For each data or each HY on operating line coordinate TL HY draw straight lines of slope minus of HLA by KY prime A. The line, the lines will intersect sec the equilibrium lines the equilibrium line at T i H y i right. So, the next <coughs> knowing H y i for each H y evaluate the integral h y 1 to h y 2 d h y h y i minus h y h y i minus h i and determine the tower height. Right. So, that is the overall procedure for evaluation of tower height. So, next we have only one uh, important topic where from there exists certain quantitative scope of material balance, simple material balance, but the concept is very important that is called blow down, right. Blow down of cooling tower or in of this cooling tower circulating water. What is blow down? It is simply a uh, practice of purging. Why we have to purge the circulating water to some extent? Because you see there is continuous loss of water due to evaporation, right. And when it evaporates, it leaves behind the solute, 
And what is the solute here? The salts which will eventually contribute to the TDS, TDS of the circulating water that is a total dissolved solid. So, TDS load whenever it is increasing we have to keep it below certain threshold and for that purpose we will purge certain amount of circulating water continuously and at the same time we will go on adding makeup water. So, this is the basically the process called the blowdown of circulating water. So, what is this C blowdown and, and uh, if I simply consider this cooling tower next we will have the pump right next the heat load and next it goes back to the cooling tower once again. So, here this is B, so that is blow down. We are adding makeup water M of concentration C1, whereas the circulating water has got the concentration C1 is the TDS, TDS concentration. Right? And there is some evaporation loss as well as drift loss and leakage loss. So, this is evaporation loss, this is drift and leakage loss. So, we have to maintain it under steady state. So, what we will do? We have to write the overall material balance here. as M is equal to B blowdown plus evaporation loss plus drift loss, right. And component balance will yield that make up water into C1 that blowdown plus drift into C2. So, from here we can actually calculate the rate of adding makeup water. We can solve for M provided we know D and E, right. There are two equations. So, obviously, there will be D, E, and definitely C1, C2 unknown. So, we can write here D, E, C1 and C2. So, for evaporation you see there are empirical equations which you do not have to remember like we have an empirical equation which states that evaporation loss this is a thumb rule. The E in GPM that is a gallon per minute equal to water flow rate in GPM multiplied by range in Fahrenheit multiplied by 0.0008, right. So, this is an equation by which we can calculate the evaporation loss. The, there is no universal thumb rule for to calculate D. So, that depends on the system what is my power of the fan whether there is any leakage. So, we have to go for an estimate. Okay. So, D is to be solved by uh, this empirical thumb rule or which is based on the results of experiments doing some conductive or progressive measurements and C1 and C2 these are to be measured, right. So, these are to be measured and similar is the drift. So, 
So once we know this D, E, C1 and C2, these two equations, from these two equations there are only two unknowns M and B. So you can calculate M and B, right. So that is all for the cooling tower. In the next session we are going to start about the liquid-liquid extraction.